Welcome everybody to Tino's Time Wrestling. And on this episode, me and Mike, welcome back Mike, are going to give you a post-show analysis of everything that went down last night at Hell in a Cell. And let's not waste any time and let's get right into the results. And the first match that happened on the card, it actually happened on the pre-show, it was Natalia versus Mandy Rose. And, you know, in this match, Mike, I honestly don't know why it wasn't a tag team match. We saw on Monday, was it was Monday, that in the backstage they were fighting, Tamina and Natalia were fighting in a ring, and then Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke came up and were talking and everything, and were talking about their names and how that's the only reason why they have their title. Why would we see a singles match? Were you surprised? I mean... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was definitely surprised. You would think uh, you would think the tag team match would make more sense. I, I don't know what the story behind that is. Maybe someone was injured or, or, or they have other plans. I don't know. But, um, you know, for, for, for a match I wasn't even expecting or really didn't even care for when they announced it. They they did pretty good. It was yeah. It was, it was a decent match. I th- I I thought it was a really good match, and it was back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And to tell you, she came back after uh, Rose went for a few quick covers. I thought they they brought some good action. I I it's not, I'd say a C plus, definitely better than average. But you know, that's yeah. I I'm... gave it I gave it like a two, like a two point five. Like, yeah, I thought it was decent, like very back and forth. Natalia ended up winning via submission with the sharpshooter. Mandy Rose tapped out. And, you know, I mean, it, like you said, it wasn't bad, but I mean, I would honestly, I just would have rather seen a tag team title match because again, like we talked about on the pre-show, they're not using the tag titles and it just, you know, yeah. So mm-hmm. that's just what I thought of it, but let's get to the main card. And this is something I talked about. I mentioned it when we talked about this match, yeah. I thought they were going to start with, a, with a hell in a cell because in the recent years, in the last three or four years they have. And that's exactly what happened. It was the SmackDown Women's Championship Hell in the Cell. They started off the show and they kicked it off. It was the EST at WWE, Bianca Belair versus Bayley. And, you know, this match I thought was really good. Like, I thought it was a fun. I thought it was a great Hell in the Cell. It was a great way to start off the show, especially like when Bayley was grabbing Bianca's hair and her ponytail and was wrapping it up the ropes and the chair and everything. Like, that seemed like it hurt. I mean, what did you think about the match? And was there, like, any, like, big moments you were just like, oh, my God, about? Not really any oh, my God moments, but I thought they really they really did have a, a really good match. And you called it. And I was thinking about it as I was watching. I was like, yeah, here it is, the, the opening match. I thought they did a good job at, at kicking it off, surprisingly. Um, I like the involvement of all the kendo sticks. I like how you know, she set it up and you knew that eventually it was going to come back and she was going to be yeah. the one that got. Well, and that's the gone. thing. It seemed like everything Bailey did, Bianca had a reversal for it and she always used it against her. Like mm-hmm. she, like Bailey set up the two kendo sticks. I don't know, bridge, whatever she was doing and Belair put her through it. And then right. she wrapped her thing around the chair and she ended up hitting her with it. It's just like, it's crazy how much she uses that ponytail to her advantage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was just, yeah. So I just wanted to mention that. So go on. I like the use of uh, her getting her Bailey tying her hair uh, to the rope. I thought that was cool. Kind of a, a unique thing that we really haven't seen done. And uh, the ending was cool, man. It was a, a Van Daminator. You know, that's what he used to use to throw them the chair and then do the spin kick. So kind of a shout out to Van Dam. I'd give it a solid B. I thought it was a really good opening match. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I gave it an A. I personally liked it. I thought it was a really good. Valer did the KOD off of the ladder. Mm-hmm. like on the ladder to Bailey and she picked up the win for the one, two, three, and still your SmackDown women's champion. And that Bianca looked like Beller. it hurt. Huh? That KOD on the chair looked like it hurt. Or on the ladder. You, it was, oh yeah. yeah I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. On the ladder. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Yeah. That, that see, that's the type of stuff that I feel like hurts. Like, you know, they could say like this stuff is fake and everything, but mm-hmm. that stuff's got to hurt, man. Like, yeah, ouch. Dude. You can't fake gravity, right? No, like that stuff has just got to hurt. Yeah, I definitely thought like this was a great way to start off Hell in the Cell. The ladder was all warped and twisted after uh, Bailey smashed into it, too. It was crazy. What? The ladder was all twisted after. Oh, yeah, it was. It looked like it looked like the ladder. Do you remember when the Hardys and Eminem used to fight all the time and they had those great ladder matches? Mm -hmm. Remember when more? Not was it? No, it wasn't Morrison. It was not. Was it Johnny Nitro? Was his name right? I, f- I forget. It was it was Morrison and uh I forget Eminem. What was talking about Miz? No, Eminem with Morrison, Molina, like back in the day. 
Oh, um, I, I can't think of his name right now. John Morrison, Molina, at night was I think it was Johnny Nitro. But anyway, you remember when he broke his nose versus the Hardys? Yeah. And they like that ladder was like all twi- that all type of twisted. That's what it kind of reminded me of. And I just remember when he broke his nose. I remember watching that match live, and I was like, ouch. Yeah, oh, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you, sometimes even though you know in the back of your mind, it's you know it's not real. You yeah. sometimes still, it's like okay, that one hurt. That yeah, one's ouch. legit. Yeah. Ouch. And we'll, was- we'll talk about him when we get to the, the main event and the other hell in the cell that happened. Drew McIntyre's back looked horrible this morning. Did you see that fate that Facebook and that Instagram post? No, I, I didn't see the, the any of the social media that he put out, but I saw it in, during the match, and that Ooh, was it that was, was brutal. We'll we'll get to that match later, but oh my god, ouch! And the next match on the card, it was a match that we saw that we talked about again. That it it was Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. We talked about it in the pre-show, and we said this match should have been in Hell, hell in a Cell. And, you know, I thought this match was a good match. I definitely think, you know, Seth came up behind him. He tried to get Cesaro. They battled over the barricade. And Seth tried to get a little bit of momentum in the match in the beginning. And, you know, Seth does what he's been doing for a while. And, you know, I'm not surprised. Like, I I mean, how did you feel about this match and everything that, like, happened with these two? I thought it was a good match. I, I thought heading into it, this match and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens would probably be the, the two best from an in-ring standpoint. Um, yeah. They deliver. They always deliver. They're two of the best, Seth Rollins and Cesaro. <clears throat> I was a little confused um, with the ending, but, hey, I'm happy because I, I was surprised, very surprised, because I, I thought Cesaro was going to win. But they, uh, yeah. they Seth got over, and you mentioned that we were, you were going to shed some light on that. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. Seth Rollins, he ended up stealing the victory by rolling up Cesaro. And, you know, I thought this was a really good match. And, you know, it did. they did everything that, you know, they always do. And they, they have, do great things in the ring. But the reason, you know, they that Seth Rollins won and there was, like, a rumor that I heard on reasons why, because this match was supposedly supposed to be inside the cell. Cesaro really? was supposed to go over and win. It was supposed to, this was supposed to be the other match in the cell from the rumor that I heard, but apparently they want SummerSlam to be so big. All these big plans they, they keep promising us. Hopefully it's true. Is they wanted Seth to beat Cesaro. So he has some momentum going in on facing edge at SummerSlam. And supposedly the second big match on SmackDown is going to be Seth Rollins versus or Seth Rollins versus edge. And then Cesaro will go on to do other things. Hmm. So, I mean, if that's what this match like was and that's what it's setting up and that's like, you know, and I, I, I mean, I would, I kind of mad we didn't see it in the cell, but I mean, if that's what they're setting up, I can't be mad because I think Seth Rollins versus edge is a dream match that everybody's wanted since like 16. Yeah. I mean, since, since Mr. Money in the bank and since he had that run with the authority, that's just, that was a match I've always had in my back of my mind. Like, how do you feel like about that? Would you want to see that SummerSlam? Yeah, yeah. Again, man, all these promises for SummerSlam. Hopefully, at least half of them come true, right? They got, they got four, or they, they got, they got Lashley versus Lesnar. They're promising us. We mm-hmm. got Reigns and Cena. We're supposed to have at Seth and Seth and uh, Seth and Edge. I just said it. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind today. <laughs> but uh yeah so there's that's three big matches that they're promising us and if all those are good those three matches could just be the card like could we just not have any other matches on the card and just let those three battle for three hours you know <laughs> that'd be crazy like you know it just like so hopefully that comes true and you know i guess i thought it was a good match i'm, I'm gonna give it like a 3.5 so what what do you think i'll give it a b minus yeah, I definitely like I said, you like you said with with uh, Seth Rollins, Cesaro, and the other match we'll talk about in a minute with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. They're great in the ring and everything that they do, and I just thought it would have been great to see them inside the cage. But hey, I don't run WWE. But the next match on the card, and you know this one, I need to I need to take a minute because when this happened, I it was Alexa Bliss versus Shayna Baszler, and this was a match we talked about. I didn't know how it was going to go I didn't know like we didn't know if Alexa Bliss was going to do some crazy things and you know I don't know if you mentioned or if you saw it in the beginning of the match, I didn't even realize Reginald and Nia Jax came out did you I didn't even see them come out in the uh, out to the ring with Shayna 
I didn't see him come out, but I figured they would be there. Yeah. At, you know, and that was one of the things, like, I was, like, wondering, because, like, I thought Shayna and Nia were, like, done after, like, the tag team. Are they still friends? I thought, like, Nia and Reggie were doing their own thing. <laughs> like, I think they're using them to progress the whole storyline, you know, with Bliss. Well, yeah, and that was the thing, like, during the match, every time Shayna Baszler got some type of momentum and did different types of moves on Bliss, Alexa seemed to like it and laugh, and it didn't even seem to, like, affect her. Like, I don't know, like, what it was. But then later on in the match, when she locked eyes with Nia and she, like, took some type of control from her, did you, like, see that? I don't know. I, I, I was losing it, man. I thought I was seeing things. That was kind of weird. Like, I want to know how much time they spent practicing that because they had it down. <laughs> right? It looked like the Undertaker with the urn, like, right? like Paul, Paul Barrow. Like, come on, man. Like, really? They spent a lot of time because they, they had it down pretty good. Um, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect at this point with the storyline? You know, it's it's just goofy. Well, and that was the thing where it was just like, I just didn't understand. And then after she took control of her and then all of a sudden, Naya seemed like she can, like she was confused. Like she didn't know what happened. Like, let's be real. Like, come on. You were just like, come on. Yeah. Like, whatever. And then, you know, and, and this is what was surprising the most. I took Shayna Baszler and th- you took Bliss, right? You wanted, you took Bliss to win this I match? Think so, yeah. Yeah. So, and that was the thing. Bliss ended up winning by, didn't, yeah. She, oh, she did the sister Abigail. And then she did the Twisted Bliss. Did you know that was only, like, the second or third time she's done the Twisted Bliss in, like, a year? Which I thought was very surprising because I thought she's had more matches than she has, but apparently she hasn't in the last year. She's done so many promos and so many backstage stuff. It's like, you know, and that was the thing. When Alexa had her run as champion a few years ago, I thought she was great in the ring. And she did, like, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you think, like, they're just, like, wasting her with this character? Because... Like, Bliss did win this match, and we she, like, you know, and now what's going to be next for Shayna? Because now that's the thing. Like, what do you do with Shayna after she's losing so much momentum and she keeps losing to everybody? Like, she's jobbing on Raw, and then she's, like, not that I hate a Bliss, but I just feel like Shayna should have won. Yeah, I, I think that they are wasting uh, Alexa Bliss here because – the times that she actually executed wrestling moves during this match, she looked really good. I, I remember thinking as she was doing it, I was like, wow, she, she actually really impressed me. So, and you mentioned she looked really good during her run when she had it a, a couple years back. So I do think they're wasting her with this, with this character. Maybe when they bring in the Lily character, they could kind of transition her away because I think she could be more in a different role. And as for Baszler, yeah, man. Um, it's going to be, I mean, maybe she, I would like, honestly, I'd like to see her go down to NXT, not as a demotion, because yeah. I, I don't but believe it like would Finn be. Balor. Look at right, what happened. Exactly. Finn Balor is the perfect example right. of what happens when you go to the main roster and you, not that he had a horrible like time, he had an intercontinental title run and stuff like that. But he mm-hmm. definitely should have done more. He should have been in the universal title picture as soon as he got back. But after he went down, he went back and won the NXT championship. And then he beat everybody in the roster and just destroyed it until Kaylee and Cross. Nobody's going to beat Kaylee and Cross right now. <clears throat> but I mean, yeah, that's that would definitely be something. I was thinking about that too. Who who do you think she would go and face though? I don't know. I like they have a couple of big girls down there, man, that are pretty, pretty dominant. They have that Raquel Gonzalez and then they have uh, uh, that. That that would be awesome. To see Martinez, her. too. Right. Yeah. Mar- yeah. Mercedes. Thank God she wasn't in re- retribution for too long. Remember when Mercedes was in like the first ever like appearance of retribution? See, that's when I, I wasn't watching when I just came back shortly after they broke up. Oh, OK. Gotcha. But yes, yeah, so I know who they are, though. Yeah, but so she was in the beginning of it when they first came out, but then I I don't know who took her out of it, but she just went back to and she went back to the performance center and now she's come back to NXT. Thank goodness because that yeah. retribution faction was horrible. And There's a lot of women down there though that I think she could have really good matches with programs I, in general. Yeah, and I mean you know you know even like EO or Zoe Stark, Tony Storm would even be good ones. I'm very impressed with Zoe. I thought she, I think she's been very good from what I've like seen. Like from her on the next day. I mean, I like I just think that that they could say who whatever they want. I think that is the best wrestling, like women's wrestling is in that NXT. 
in my opinion. For, for my money, I think the best women's division is uh, Impact. I really like what they do. Do you? Who is there any like people like in there that like like because I don't watch like Impact like too much. You so, like, you would their champion uh, Diana Perazzo. She used to be in the WWE. That's right. Okay, so okay, so that's where she's champion. I see her all the time. I just yep. didn't know what like promotion she was in. Like, um, that's so. where what's her name came from. She's going. Uh, John Morris is John Morrison's wife. She's oh, in NXT. Oh, now. Frankie Monte. Or yeah, Monte. but she okay. really her real name is Tyra, or she would wrestle by Tyra Valkyrie. Oh, she, okay. was, she was over there. Um, they have a lot of great uh, Kylie Ray. She's from Chicago. She wrestles there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. They have they have a lot. Jordan Grace. They have a lot of good women's okay. wrestling. I just think it's. I it's, guess I got to check out more more Impact Women's Div- or Division Wrestling. <laughs> Impact in general. I really yeah. like what they do. Yeah, I've I've not watched Impact. I could not tell you when it's it was it's been a minute because. I don't know. I got I got to a period where it was just wrestling, and then it was just like a period of like I didn't watch like the actual like wrestling wrestling for like a minute. But I would go back and watch like all the older stuff. Well, I'm gonna. Um, but uh, then my but then my cousin started watching it, and then we uh and then I just got back into it. So <laughs> yeah. remind me after this recording stops to uh, send you a link to a website that is uh allows you to watch pay per views. Oh, true. With ease, we'll yeah, hey, that works. But we've got way off track. Let's That's get right. back. To, let's let's get back to hell in the cell, <laughs> and let's talk about Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. And this was a match I just mentioned. You said like Seth Rollins and Cesaro, great wrestling in the ring. But you know, again, this is something else. I wanted to see hell in the cell because I think that these two they could fight forever and they could do whatever. But Inside the cell, I just think they would have been awesome. And I don't know if you did it, if you had, if you watched it, but on Peacock, they did it, the ultimate hell in the cell. And they picked eight matches from women's, new generation, old generation, attitude era, everything. And every match was inside hell in the cell. They just need to do that next year and call it a day. But, you know, I thought this was a great wrestling match. And, you know, Owens and Zayn, like I said, are great in the ring and they could fight forever. How did you feel? about this match and everything that happened. And it was brutal because did you notice that Kevin Owens was like not okay for a minute? Like he kept coughing and there was just something wrong. Yeah, he was obviously selling the uh, the effects of the Commander Aziz blow still. Yeah, like, I, you know, I don't know. Like there, it just seemed like there was something wrong. And then when Zane's mouth started bleeding, like his beard covers it off. I feel the guy needs to like shave, man. I don't know. Like, I, I get it's for his character, but, like, I feel like that's a lot. But, like, at one point, they showed it so up close, like, his whole mouth was bleeding. And, mm-hmm. like, just the hair was everywhere. I was like, okay. I mean, yeah. how did you feel about, like, just everything that went down in this match? Overall, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I've seen these guys wrestle so many times that it's really hard for them to do something new. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of where the whole the storyline from the – Commander Aziz and Owens, the whole match, he's selling the coughing. And yeah, you knew that was going to play a role in it somehow. Um, I was surprised by the outcome because I picked Owens going in. And of course, Sami Zayn ends up getting the win, which is kind of cool. I, I like that. Um, I don't I don't think this is going to be the end of his his gimmick by any means, because no. I think I, I want to see this good. documentary. Where's this documentary <laughs> we were promised, man? We're supposed I don't to know. This- I don't we're think it's going to ever come out. We were supposed to get this documentary and we haven't seen it. And, and yeah, you, like you said, Sammy Zayn ended up picking up the win and it was very surprising. And he did the halufa kick and he like that, 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 ah, that finisher hurts, man. That, that halufa kick, you get him right in the mouth. That stuff's going to hurt. And he picked up the win. And like you said, I was surprised Zayn won too, but I hope this is the end of the match because also like the rivalry, because during the pre-show, I forgot exactly who it was. Somebody said that Hell in the Cell is the pay-per-view where all the rivalries end. I thought that really? was WrestleMania. I thought so, too. <laughs> like, they, they said that out of nowhere. I'm like, so we're not going to. Like, it was, like, right after the Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn match. And I was just like, okay. But they rewrite history. WWE is really good at that. I, I guess so. I'm just like, okay. and But we'll have to see what happens with these two on SmackDown. I would like to see Owens, in my opinion. Maybe go fight Apollo for the Intercontinental title. Like, you, you know, like I would love to. I think Kevin Owens needs to have a title on him, man. He deserves it. He hasn't been like in like a title picture in a minute. And yeah. I think I think that would be good. 
see it at Money in the Bank Owens versus Apollo. Because yeah, that's something else. Like, that. we, like we talked about all the stuff that wasn't on the card. Where was Sheamus? Where was Apollo? Why RKO. wasn't Roman Reigns shown at all? Like we talked about, they said that he wasn't going to be on it, but you couldn't even like show him like he couldn't show up. Or was he in the backstage? And they, you know, it just like, you know, we could go on about all the things that weren't on the card. Yeah, right, right? RKO. Yeah, R- yeah, RK. We're gonna talk about them when we get to the raw preview, though, because I want to. I, I want them. They they deserve a raw smack or a raw, not a raw SmackDown, a raw tag team titles. But when are when are Eric and Ivar are gonna get their title shot? They won a number one contenders match. I think it was a battle royal. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think that they've got their title shot either. So it's like you know. But speaking of Raw, let's talk about the Raw Women's Championship match. And it was Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. And, you know, I want, I, let's, let, I want you, you to tell me first what you thought about this match. And because, like, you know, this was one, like, you were really hyped for on Friday. So I thought, I thought overall it was a good match. Obviously, um, it was going to be hard going in to have a bad match with these two women, in my opinion. Um, this, the, the end again, um, if there's a common theme for me in this with it, for in hell in the cell this year was, uh, I was surprised by a lot of the, the outcomes because Charlotte Flair won via disqualification and I expected, uh, Rhea would probably get over somehow, but that's the beauty of it. I thought they had a good physical match. Both women could really work. They could really sell. I think that Rhea, um it's still green in a lot of areas but she's only 24 years old so she's going to only get better um i was i was overall i was really happy with it i would say this is a solid b yeah definitely definitely did you notice that Rhea hurt her knee though do you think that was like fake or do you think she kind of like hurt her no, really i don't believe it i don't believe anything that they do on camera is real <laughs> i love it <laughs> I love, I'm I love, serious. I love, I love your effect, man. Well, you I can just it. tell by the reaction because if it was a legitimate injury or if it was something they, that wasn't planned, they would they, stop it. Or medical, it's some something would be different. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't even think about that. But like when these injuries happen, like I'm just like maybe, maybe not. Like you know, like come on. But yeah, like you said, like Charlotte won by disqualification, and it, I feel like there wasn't even disqualification. She hit her with the announce table. Like, come mm-hmm. on, people bounce he- people's heads off the announce table all the time. Because she picked it up, it's disqualification. I call bullshit. Yeah, I agree. It, w- it was kind of soft, right? I mean, I felt they could have probably done a little bit better with that, but... I mean, I mean, if we see a match of money in the bank, man, I'm throwing something at my TV. It's going to be yeah, a three-way. It's, it's not that I don't like these two, but I just, like, like let's see Becky come back. And, you know, like, that's something, like, you know, in the, with money in the bank coming up. I want to see girls like I want to see Becky return or let's see like Liv Morgan or somebody like that, like win it or like, let's just have some type of surprises or, you know, shit, shit. Bring back a legend that can still wrestle. There's some of them that can still go out there and do it. Bring back Michelle McCool. And that's just something, you know, like I just want to see something different with Rhea. And that's, you know, that was something that I always talked about with Baszler. I would love to see her. But once you brought up the going back to NXT, I would love to see all those matches. I think all those were dream matches now at this point. Yeah. Expe- especially once Rhonda comes back because I know I think people seem to forget about Rhonda sometimes. Is she coming back? I, I think she will eventually. I feel like I feel like she's going to. And I feel like we're gonna get a four horse women UFC and four horse women WWE. That'd be cool if we because, got it. I mean WWE. they've all been they've all been in the crowd, they've all been a part in some type of WWE in the last like five years. Uh, yeah, like the last like five or six years, they've been a part of it in some shape or form with Baszler with Ronda. I just think that would be totally cool. But mm-hmm. we'll have to see what happens on Monday night. Hopefully we find out some answers tonight because, you know, hopefully they will start building because it's only four weeks from yesterday that the WWE universe is back in a live crowd. Are you excited? Wait for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Wrestling is, <clears throat> if you want to call it a sport, I'll call it a sport for the sake of, of, uh, of our conversation. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> wrestling is a sport where you need fans it's yeah. just it's it's infinitely better the product is infinitely better with fans and that and that was something like you know like people have been saying too like about like them thinking that it's going to get better with fans and i definitely think once the fans get back it's definitely going to get better and if that's really what they're waiting for couldn't they just like tell us that <laughs> but well, i guess the- i mean i guess not telling us is a good thing too 
I don't believe the storytelling as far as the writing is going to get any better. Fans aren't going to affect that. But I believe that just in the, the overall production, how we view it will be a better experience just because it's better with fans than it is all those people's faces. Yeah. You know, it's just better with the live reaction and just the synergy. And it's just, yeah. you feel well, it almost. When I went, I, I don't know if I ever told you this, but um, I went to the uh, Survivor Series, the weekend of Survivor Series. I was in Chicago a few years ago before the pandemic and everything. Mm. And that weekend we went to Friday Night SmackDown, TakeOver, War Games, Survivor Series, and Raw. And I've never felt electricity going to like Sox games, Bears games, Hawks games, Bulls games. I've never felt to that type of electricity that I felt in the wrestling arena ever. Like, I just, I just, I don't know. Like that, that energy, like I was screaming and I just wanted to be a part of it. And I was just like, oh my God, mm-hmm. like, this is awesome. But it sucks. We got, we got raw. And not that I don't like, I, I don't want to like this raw, but raw is horrible out of every show that's in WWE programming every week and wrestling in general, I feel. So mm-hmm. it's like, I wanted to get SmackDown or something or NXT, but we got raw. You going to, are you going to go? You're going to try to go to Raw? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe me and my daughter might go. I don't know. Uh, you know I've been to one one other wrestling event I went to. Um, I said I was a big wrestling fan growing up, and my birthday is in August. So every year I would get the pay per view, the SummerSlam pay per view, right? Okay. And 1994, Undertaker versus Undertaker, they came to Chicago. That's right. I was the first ever event at the United Center. That was the very first event at the United Center. I did not. And know. I had the very first, like, we were the very first row of the first, bl- bl- cool. like, balcony. Dude, it was fucking awesome. That's a dope. I uh, see. That's somebody I always wanted to see live. That's that Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, too. Oh, my God. In a cage match. Oh, in the blue one? That that they I was watching I was watching yeah. the the bump they were talking about it and they were talking about like great Bret Hart matches and they that mentioned that that's so funny that you say that true that crazy I didn't know that was in Chicago yep cool. fun facts ninety four SummerSlam speaking of cages though let's talk about this main event and the hell in a cell between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley the WWE champion and remember if Drew lost this he would never be able to fight Lashley he will never be able to fight for the WWE title as long as Lashley is the champion and you know this match they wasted no time they beat the living hell out of each other with everything tables kendo sticks shit MVPs Kane got involved at one point and when, when that happened, I knew at some point MVP was going to get involved. But, like, really, the man sneaks in side the hell in the cell after the referee gets knocked out, and then he interrupts the two, the three count. I think Drew would have won the match at that point if it wasn't for MVP. <laughs> Let's come on. And then he gets locked in the cage. With Yeah, oh, and that's no fun, man. That I See, like, I, I, it's like I kind of want to go inside of the cell. <laughs> like, I feel like I would be scared. Like, you know, like, like they when they do, like, the fan fest, I think they have, like, a miniature version or they got something. I think that would be so cool. But that would scare the hell out of me. But imagine, like, getting, like, what would you do if you got, like, locked inside there with, like, Drew or like, Bobby? Man, it wouldn't be fun, especially if you were trying to double cross the other guy, right? <laughs> right. I mean... it's, right. I'm, and, you know, MVP is just amazing and everything that he's done with, like, Lashley and the Hurt Business and, like, we talked about on the pre-show and everything. I just loved it. But, like... <laughs> You know, also, didn't they, like, build, like, a bridge? Didn't he use something? Didn't McIntyre build, like, some type of a bridge, right? It was, like, a – didn't he use kendo sticks kind of like how Bailey did? Yeah, 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 he did. But the, the thing that I remember most from this match is chairs. There was, like, 400 chairs involved. And there was just chair after chair after – just kept throwing I, I think Edric Christian called them. They were, like, just bring yeah, out all right. the chairs. Like, oh, my God. Well, yeah, and that was the other thing. And the steel steps, the steel steps got involved a lot in both Hell in the Cell matches. I was surprised because, honestly, you know, I know they use a lot of things, but I feel like the steel steps is one of the things that rarely gets used that I feel like should get used a lot more. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, like they do, but they don't like, I mean, yeah. I mean, in the end though, Lashley ended up, no, I'm sorry, McIntyre. Let me go back because McIntyre was about to go for the Claymore. I thought McIntyre had it, man. And then of course, MVP gets involved and grabbed his leg and Lashley rolls up McIntyre for the one, two, three. Really? 
I'm like, oh my, I, I think I was in shock a little bit more than Drew because I didn't realize how fast it happened. And I looked down surprised. at my husband, I'm like, I'm like, dang, dang. I'm like, Drew can't fight no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was surprised because like you said, man, it happened so quick. And then you then the next thought is like, okay, well, he can't challenge for the the uh the w the raw champion or the the ww championship anymore so what what's next for him but i have an idea and i think what they're going to do with him oh true well when we get to the raw preview in a minute let me know i need some of your insight but okay. yeah so lashley ended up picking up the win him and mvp got out of the way they got the hell out of the cell they're, they they got out of the hell in the cell they're like we don't want to be in there no more and that's how the pay-per-view ended did you stay up and watch the uh, Broken Skull session with Mick Foley? No, I did not. No, I, I didn't either. I was so tired. I needed to go to bed. I didn't start until like 10 o'clock. I had to wait and watch the replay. Long mm-hmm. story, Father's Day. But yeah, but that, that was fun. I want to I wanna, eh, I wanna watch that. I also, before we uh, before we started recording everything, I was watching the, uh, the Most Wanted Treasure with Ric Flair, and they're trying to find the butterfly robe. They just found really? the one, they want they just found the guy they're about to go look at it the scar the starcade uh blue one from 83 that that's was awesome. the, uh, the finale was on last night and that's the one that they're doing so that's what they're going to do but I want to let's let's talk about that and let's get right into the raw preview and let's you know let's not waste any time and you tell me what do you think's going to be for Lashley or what do you think's going to be next for Drew do you think Drew has a big match at SummerSlam? Or do you think this is like where like Drew kind of goes off and has a couple months off? Because, you know, he has been in the main event picture now for a long time. I mean, he's been, what, since since he won the Royal Rumble in 19, right? Or 20? Yeah. Did he win it? Yeah, 20. Yeah, he had a huge 20. Yeah. I, I mean, what do you think? What do, what do you think's next for WWE champion Andrew McIntyre? In, in the immediate future, I don't know if he's going to have some time off, like you mentioned, or if they're going to put him in kind of a short-term feud. But what I think the long-term play with Drew now is because <clears throat> they've established him as a main event guy, and now he cannot challenge for your title on your show. So I think they're going to kind of – he's just going to kind of buy his time until the draft in a couple of months – He's going to get drafted to SmackDown where he will challenge for the Universal Championship. Versus Roman or Cena? Whoever has it. Because he Did you see that rumor too? About all the stuff going on with John Cena and Drew McIntyre, how McIntyre wants to face Cena? McIntyre wants to face Cena? Yeah. See, I knew you know that, but that just re, re- you know, like, see, like once you here. said that, that was like that, that that would just make so much sense. That would be that would make that would just be a great way because he's pretty much beat everybody on Raw. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, he's beat Randy, he's beat everybody, and I feel like there's nobody else that he could really like fight that would be new. And you know, like like you said, I would I, in my opinion, I would take him off until the until the draft and then have him come back. And, or not even until the draft, even have him come back in like when the fans return and then have him declare himself for money in the bank and get let, let him be competing the money in the bank match this year and then let him, you know, I think that would be something because, you know, I think I, I we've talked a lot about SummerSlam. Money in the bank is first, <laughs> you know, like, right. yeah. like we've talked a lot about SummerSlam like in this show, but there's still one more pay-per-view before we get to the biggest party this summer. So who do you think who do you think Lashley will face at Money in the Bank? Do you think we're gonna get mm. something stupid like Kofi? Are we gonna see Kofi and Lashley, or do you think we see like something? I think we're gonna get Lesnar. I think we'll get Lesnar. You think Les or do you think Lesnar shows up at Money in the Bank? Because now that he didn't show I, up last think, night. Oh, I'm sorry. Did did you say who who he's gonna get at uh, Money in the Bank or who yeah, he's gonna get I at th- SummerSlam? No, money in the bank. I think, yeah, no, okay. I think I think it's gonna be Lashley and Lesnar eventually. I just think for like the next month, what's gonna go, what are they gonna do with the WWE title? I just wanted to get your mm, opinion. It'll probably it'll probably be Kofi. That's what that that's what I was saying. That's what I was thinking. Cause it's just like who else is there right now that like you know, we could see a two on one where it's Xavier and Kofi, <laughs> you know, like we've seen before. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to do there. Orton is involved in something, so. No. Well, and that was the next thing with, like, we talked about it earlier with, like, Akbar or Eric and I- Ibar. They won 
the battle our battle royal like I think it was like two or three weeks ago to become the number one contenders. But I feel like RK Bro is so hot and everybody is over them. I mean, sh- I mean, shit. I want to buy that T-shirt really bad, but you know, <laughs> like all that stuff is just great, and everything that Riddle have, and Randy Orton have done is great, and I feel like they deserve to be the tag team title or the tag champs. Do you think that they save that for SummerSlam, though? Yes, because I think what they're gonna do is the reason why you haven't seen AJ Styles and almost defend the title is because well, that's the th- well, that's the thing. Like uh, before, like I wanted to mention, I feel like that was the only reason why they did that was to give AJ a grand slam. Pretty much because almost cannot wrestle. He's really he's really green. I'm not even joking. He's terrible. He's he's green. He's very he's oh, really yeah. he's really not. He was. They thought he was farther along than he was. They realized that he that they're not a viable tag team. So now they have to get the belts off them. And the only team that they see that can do that or the team that they want to do that is the Viking Raiders. So, but I think the long play is RK Bro. I think at SummerSlam, we the RK Bro will have their, their title victory. Yeah. And uh, hey, I, I would not mind to see the Viking Raiders versus RK Bro at SummerSlam. I think that would be great right. because people seem to forget again. Eric and Ibar were great in NXT. They were great in the tag division. Weren't they tag champs at one point? Because I didn't watch it like in the beginning. To be I honest. didn't watch it then either. I I for, I just forgot it was on that. It was on the WWE Network, man, and I just forgot it was on Wednesdays. It's just easier to press record and then when you're going to the DVR, you know, like sure, just yeah. put it on USA in the first place. But they had a great run in NXT, and they even competed in War Game and since War Games. And since they came up to the main roster, they really haven't done anything. So I think that would be a great rivalry to see. And I think, you know, especially with like kind of how they've already interacted with with Riddle, I think it would be great to see them turn heel. And let's see an actual face versus heel tag team match like we used to see mm-hmm. instead of two front, you know, like that's just, you know. Yeah. And all, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we talked about it a lot, but with all the freaky stuff that Alexa pulled last night with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler and everything, do you think we see something else go unfold? Do you think she goes after somebody else? Do you think we don't see her? Because I feel like, like Bray, like the Bray Wyatt and the Fiend has to come back eventually, right? I mean, I think that's the only reason why they're keeping her like this. Or do you like, like, I know we talked about it being separate too. Do you think that is like, I don't know. I just was thinking about it last night. I was like, there's just has to be a reason why she's still doing this. I, yeah, I hope that, I hope that they have a bigger reason. I, I, the fiend has to come back. There's rumors that he's going to be back soon. Right. So yeah. hopefully when he does come back, she could kind of go off and do her own thing. As I said, I think she'll be better off kind of suited in a different role, but I think we're going to get more of their storyline tonight. Well, yeah, hopefully. Hope, hopefully Raw is good. There's no baseball on. I think Is the playoffs on? Uh, basketball, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, okay. Maybe there is baseball on. The Sox are starting playing. So, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm gonna, I might turn the Cubs game on. But, anyway, I just hope Raw is good because, you know, Raw just has not been good. And the last thing for Raw I wanted to talk about before, like, because I wanted to get your predictions on what will happen for Money in the Bank before we go. So the last thing I want to mention about Raw, what's going to go on with Rhea? Do you think we see, like, who who do you think's next for Rhea? Do you think we see Charlotte again? Yeah, I think it's going to be Charlotte and Asuka. And a triple threat and money in the bank? Because it's lazy booking, and I don't believe that there's anybody there that could really be elevated to that title picture. So I think that's what we're going to get. I mean, yeah. And again, like, I just feel like they're just continuously, like, they're using the fans as a thing right now. But I feel like if they do not provide everything that they've said that they're going to provide us by SummerSlam, I think people are just going to be heated. Because even like last night, like with me, like missing it, people were like mad about like the Peacock and the Peacock and stuff like that. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, like it's just going to get like worse, like as like everything just gets back to normal and everything. So I just really hope that it is. And you're exactly right. It's just lazy booking because that's all they they don't know how to come up with anything good anymore. It's so sad. Like they just don't know, like. It just like I'm sure, like, cause you've like you said, you've been going back and watching all the old wrestling with your daughters and everything. And the Raws that we used to get, like, even when I was like little, little, like that, those Raws were great. There was a thing, a picture I saw. It was like a, it was like a steel cage with like the rock stung cold. I think it was like Kane and Mankind. I think it was something like that. But it was a Monday Night Raw. It was just like you know, 
just like mm-hmm. great stuff like that just doesn't happen anymore. So hopefully is raw raw is good tonight. I personally would like like to see Shane or Baszler again, like I keep mentioning it. I just want to see that match really bad. But that's just me because I just, you know, I've been wanting to see that. I know it never happened in NXT. So that would be great. But there's, you know, now that Hell in the Cell is behind us, hopefully Raw is good tonight. The next pay-per-view, though, is Money in the Bank. It's time for everybody to climb the ladder to success and reach for the briefcase and get their contract to go face whatever championship that they want. So I just wanted to get some your some predictions or even some bold predictions. What do you think by the time we get to July in a month from three weeks from now, who do you think is going to be in the Money in the Bank? Do you think like what do you what do you think the card's going to look like? I think uh, Becky Lynch is going to be involved. I don't know if she's going to be. Um, I don't know if she's going to be like promoted to be there or if she's just going to show up. You know, I think yeah. she'll be involved somehow. I think uh, Seth Rollins will have a big match here. I think Lashley will have a big match here. Um, I don't think we'll see Drew on this. I think he's going to be going away as we talked about. Um, and do you think we see Roman? Cross- I'm sorry. Do you think, do you think we see Roman? Yes, I do think we see Roman and fingers <laughs> crossed we get RK bro. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like, you know, who out of everybody, who would be your two picks right now to win the money in the break, money in the bank briefcase? Because I have personally, I want to see Liv Morgan and somebody like I I don't think it would happen, but somebody like Ricochet, somebody like like that moment when Daniel Bryant won, like nobody, like you know, everybody was like or not even Daniel Bryant, I will say The Miz, because even like when like The Miz even won it back then, everybody was just so shocked and everybody was like, he's not that big of a superstar. And it's like, he literally went on to become like what he is today. And I feel like that was part of it to elevate it. So who do you have as your women's and your men's winner as of right now, if you had to pick today? I'm going to say Becky Lynch is going to win it uh, on the women's side. And... On the men's side, I'm going to say Jay Uso. I didn't even think about that. That would be that would be a twist. Imagine him walking around with that. That that would be interesting. I didn't even think about that. That's a good pick. You just yeah. outshined me there. Hopefully but <laughs> literally, I can't wait to see what happens. Hopefully, we see a lot of stuff go down in the next three weeks because Money in the Bank has always been one of my favorite pay-per-views. I liked it better when it was at WrestleMania. Personally, I just liked when it was the one time a year. It was always so big, and it was always so, it was always the match that started it off, or it was like the second match on the card at WrestleMania. And I just they would always like made it exciting. But you know, they made a pay-per-view on it, which is whatever. But like just like we talked about with Hell in the South. And make every match a, a Money in the Bank match. And let's see briefcases for every title. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Let's see a briefcase for Intercontinental tag titles. Like, that would just, you know, that would be something, like, different, I think. Because, you know, like, last year, like, I thought what they did in Money in the Bank was definitely pretty cool. Like, when with them fighting at the the headquarters, the WWE headquarters. Do you remember yeah. that? Did you think? Mm-hmm. I mean, I definitely think that they should have wrestled more in the ring. But, I mean, for what it was and everything that was going on last year, I thought it was pretty cool. So, I just wanted to say thank you again, Mike, for joining me today for the Hell in the Cell pre-show and post-show. You'll have to join me again for a pay-per-view. Hope everybody loved his insight. Hopefully, everybody loves your boys Tino's insight. Remember to go follow Mike on Instagram, on Twitter, at Chi-Town Hustle, right? Yep. H-U-S-S-L-E, yep. Yeah, okay, Chi-Town Hustle. Remember to go follow your boy at Tino Time 1996. And until Money in the Bank in July, this is your boy Tino and Mike signing out.